weakness is a risk factor for future pain in the shoulder. So put a ton of studies on that. If you have an external rotation weakness or an internal rotation weakness, classic rotator cuff testing, then you're, you have a higher risk the following season or within the next whatever of getting injured relative to people who don't have a strength deficit. Hard to quantify, hard to know who, because obviously not everyone who has that is going to go on to get injured, but if you detect it and you know how to correct it via progressive loading or something yeah. like that, why not? It, it's, it's a game of like minimizing risk in terms yeah. of injury. There's no such thing as bulletproofing anyone, right? Yeah. Despite what all these books would, would have us, would tell us. Even Ross You're looking at my book? book? Yeah. Oh. Um, Don't bug my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> It's, there's no such thing. Yeah. Injury is multidimensional. You could come on after a bad night's sleep and you form, form secure. So, yeah, it's one variable that we throw into the mix that interact with all the other variables that emerge into an injury. Yeah, it'll ruin their career and probably get them injured. Right, that's enough. That sounds terrible. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And that, that would be because we're trying to go off a textbook arbitrary construct that we think is we should be this and that, should be 90-90. I mean, yeah, yeah. Each, each side should be yeah. perfect, symmetrical yeah. to the other. Yeah. Which is not, because we know when teenagers masturbate a lot, they get bigger. Do they? They're going to lose forums. <laughs> so, <laughs> talking, <laughs> Teenager? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this is a broader topic of like maybe early specialisation in sport, for example, mm, kids, yeah. right? So they do better when they do more sports. Yeah. And I think it's the exact same thing with, with professionals. Expose yourself to a plurality of presentations or a plurality of ideas and you can critique them all and you can learn from them all and then you can build your own model and your own theory and your own hypotheses of the world and then you can go and test those and i think you shouldn't specialize until you've had at least five years of seeing multiple presentations multiple human beings from multiple walks of life otherwise you just you just don't have that that clinical now that know-how to to be able to hone your skills, I don't think. I just think you're gonna be missing something. Yeah, you're capping your potential really yeah, right now. Yeah, 100%. It's interesting, It's everybody thinks that they are until it comes to their biases, right? And yeah, then yeah. you don't read about what contradicts your own opinions. So evidence-based is evidence -based medicine, evidence-based practice is kind of like only been around 30, 40 years. It's been mm -hmm. formalized in the 80s and the 90s. And you know, research in physiotherapy is new. We're at the beginning of infinity with that, I think. We've only been doing randomized control trials for 20, 30 years, and, or with vigor anyway, and then doing systematic reviews and all this sort of stuff. So evidence-based medicine, for me, it's about, or evidence-based practice, it's about being passionate about the scientific basis of the advice that we're giving. And that's kind of it. And understanding the limitations of what science can perhaps tell us about complex human beings and individuals because I go to and fro between I'm a firm believer in objective reality there's an answer out there there's there is a reality and we're we're getting closer to finding the truth of that reality via science via because I think science is an error correction method yeah. effectively so we're approximating the truth over years because we're doing experiments and ruling things out but then I look at it I'm like you know, with complex systems such as human beings and, you know, in social sciences, we're not physics, we're not chemistry, we're not biology. Can we ever use these objective methods or the scientific method to understand something that is an emergent experience such as mm -hmm. pain? 